In this video, we're going to take a look at how to graph rational functions using transformations. So in order for us to do this, we need to compare the transformed equation and compare it to y equals 1 over x. So I've written kind of a general form of the transformed equation, where I have an a, an h, and a k. Now I haven't included the b, but the b could be included in front of the x here, um, and that would be a horizontal stretch. Um, but to start off, we're going to take a look at A um, first, and A results in a vertical stretch of the graph of Y equals 1 over X by a factor of A. I'm going to say absolute value of A, um, because if we take a look and A is less than 0, then when we say the graph is reflected in the X axis. The h, notice it's beside the x, that determines the horizontal translation. If h is greater than 0, so if it's positive, the original graph is going to be translated to the right. If h is less than 0, the graph is translated to the left. The k that determines the vertical translation. If k is greater than zero, then the basic graph is going to be translated up. And if k is less than zero, the graph is going to be translated down. Now to help you graph, I recommend that you draw the asymptotes first um, so that the rest of the values can be easily drawn around it. So let's take a look at one example here. So we have y equals 4 divided by x minus 1, and then minus 5 is on the outside. So based on just looking at the gram equation, we can see that our non-permissible value is going to equal 1. And that means that my original point x, y, I'm going to actually do a mapping notation. It is going to be moved over 1. So we have x plus 1. Now remember that the 4 and the negative 5 affect our y value. So this means it was going to be 4 times the y value. And then we have the minus 5. Now when I'm drawing my table of values, my x and y, uh, this is going to be based on the function y equals 1 over x. So I'm going to pick the numbers that we usually use. So negative 2 to positive 2, and this will be negative 1 half, negative 1, undefined 1 and a half. So now we're going to take these numbers, x and y, we're going to plug them into my mapping notation, and I'm going to get new x and y values. So I get negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then negative 7, negative 9. When I plug in 1, remember it's going to be undefined. And I'm at 2 is negative 1. And then I get negative 3. So if I just plot these, it might be a little bit crazy. So I'm going to actually use my um, asymptote first. And I know that my asymptote was x cannot equal 1. So I know that there's an asymptote at 1. Now the other asymptote, now remember that originally um, my asymptote was at x equals 0, right? And if you think about it, the reason it's 0 is because we have plus 0. So my graph hasn't moved up or down. However, now I have a minus 5. So that actually negative 5 will tell me that my whole graph has moved down 5, which means that my new horizontal asymptote is now at negative 5. So I'm going to draw the asymptote here at y equals negative 5. So actually I can now go ahead and write that this is going to be x equals 1 and y equals negative 5. I'm going to plot my four points now. So I have negative 1, negative 7, 0, and negative 9. I have 2 and negative 1, okay. 
and I have three and negative three. Now to get a few more points down here, let's just keep extending this. So I'm gonna go three and four. Um, so when I plug in three, actually that's not gonna be a very nice value. So I'm actually gonna choose something else. So I'm gonna pick four and I get one fourth and then I'll just pick negative four as well. So then I get negative one fourth. So when I plug this into my mapping notation, I'm gonna get five and one fourth. I'm gonna get one minus five, so that's negative four. Plug in negative four, I get negative three. Plug in negative quarter and I get negative six. Okay, so I just have two more points that I wanna plot just to give it some more detail and negative three and negative six. Okay, so now that I have these six points, I'm gonna connect them in a nice smooth curve. Make sure that you don't touch the asymptote. Oh, you just touch the asymptote there. So make sure you don't touch the asymptote as you come across. And this keeps going up. So we're gonna draw arrows at both ends. Same with the left side. Okay, so now let's take a look at what's happening um, with our features of our rational graph. So the behavior near the non-permissible value, again, is asking what's happening to the y values as x gets closer to one. And we can see that as x gets closer to one, we get very large positive y values and very large negative y values. So this time, as x approaches one, the absolute value of y becomes very large, similar to before, but it's approaching a different x value. Okay, my end behavior, as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity, I notice that this time is going to approach this red horizontal line, which is actually negative five. So we say that as the absolute value of x becomes very large, y this time approaches negative five. Uh, my domain is actually very similar to my asymptotes. So the domain can be everything, but x cannot be one, because that's where my asymptote is. And then for my range, y can be everything, but y cannot be negative five. And we can add the extra pieces in here into our domain or range. to give it some formality, and there we go.